Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So our topic for this tiny tiny talk today will be antiphospholipid syndrome. Okay, dear. So what is this? Uh, this one is the it's a kind of uh, acquired disorder, acquired autoimmune type of disorder. Okay, dear. So this could be either primary. I mean, there is no other predisposing factor or causes. Okay. Another one, it could be secondary to other diseases. Okay. Like what? Like it could be associated with SLE. It could be all, all other autoimmune disorder. It could be associated with, like you have a question with RA patient also. Okay. Even with some lymphoproliferative disorder or sometimes rarely with phenothiazine. Okay, dear. From this, which is important to remember, this thing. Let me change the color so it will be easier for you. So the important thing to remember for you, SLE and RA, if you have got question, maybe in your question, you will have the patient is having like uh, SLE-like feature along with that, maybe the feature of this APLS, okay? Or the feature of rheumatoid arthritis along with that feature of this APS, okay? So what are the features? What are the signs, symptoms then? Okay, you will have only from these two core. Other than that, it is lymphoproliferative or phenothiazine. Usually they are, they are not giving question, okay, dear? So signs, symptom. whenever in your question, in MRCP, MRCP, whenever you will solve more than 2,000, 3,000 question, you will get there uh, the way. There is actually a hidden known way that they are always working in that way, maybe maybe in a uh, different category, but the way is same, something they never change. So if in your question, you see recurrent abortion, please think of APS at first. This is the only place in MRCP that you will get this word, recurrent abortion, or the patient has lost two of her child or three of her child in her, uh, uh, in her life. Okay, dear. Yeah. So this is the key point for your APS, the first key point. Whenever it is there, this word is there, you first have to exclude if it is really APS or not. Okay, so this is your first key point, the current abortion. Okay, along with that, in your question, you can get maybe that platelet is low, thrombocytopenia, but APTT, it is paradoxically high. Not in all question, we'll get this scenario, but if it is there, obvious, you are over sure, yes, this is APS. Number three, there could be arterial or venous thrombosis. So they can give you also thrombus-like feature. Okay, dear. Another thing important, sometimes they will give you the libido reticularis also. It, it can happen with your, uh, they can also present it with complication. Okay, maybe the patient is pregnant. He came with like, uh, uh, like he's having IUGR patient, uh, I mean, uh, preterm delivery, not IUGR, preterm delivery already he's, she has done and she had previous history of abortion also. Platelet, you get low, APTT high, yes. You have to go for this. So there, it, the scenario can present in a different, different way. Even it can present as a pulmonary hypertension or maybe with only venous thromboembolism, okay? But with this, obviously, obviously, you will see this recurrent abortion, recurrent abortion. Without this, you will not get APS question. So if something, it is obvious that this point, it is there, it is a PSTR, at least for MRCP. There is no other topic that you will have this recurrent abortion in MRCP part one, okay? Now, you already know how to diagnose this one, right? So you have already diagnosed that this is the uh, APS, there is recurrent abortion and other feature included. Now, how, if they are asking you that what, what could be the other question? Obviously, first you have from scenario, you have diagnosed, right? Now, maybe they will ask you that the diagnosis, how your diagnosis. So diagnosis, actually, there is some criteria for part one, what you 
at least you need to know the three important antibody names. Okay, there are more than 20 types of auto, uh, auto antibodies are there that is associated with this APS. No need to go for that one. Don't make your head burden with so many things. So whatever you need, try to pick at least those. That is enough, dear. That load is even huge. Okay, so what are the three antibodies? First, that is anti-cardiolipin. Okay, anti-cardiolipin antibody. Another one is anti, this one, anticoagulant, that one. Lupus anticoagulant. Okay. Another one is your anti beta 2 GPI. This is beta. What is beta 2 GPI? Beta 2 glycoprotein 1 antibody. This is one actually. Antibody. Okay, dear. With this three, this three name, why important? Because maybe they will give you a question and they will give other name of antibody and they will give a question that which antibody is associated with APS. So these three important for your part one to know the names, hmm? to know the names. There is one question, which antibody in APS having greatest prediction of future thrombosis? Greatest prediction, that means they have a more chance to have more thrombosis. This lupus anticoagulant. One of your question. I think this is from uh, this one, uh, from your on exam maybe. Lupus anticoagulant, yeah. okay? So lupus anticoagulant, they have more prediction of future thrombosis, okay? Now, this antibody is actually how you should diagnose how you will take the samples at least you need to be sure in two occasions which is separated by 12 weeks so first time you take one sample after 12 weeks tell the patient to come again take another sample if both are positive yes they are they are APS okay dear not only this antibody is enough actually, along with that sign symptom also needed. But for you guys, no need to know about those uh, descriptive things. Just know the time, time. Yes, the time is important. There is a question that how you will, two samples, 12 weeks apart. Yes, dear Dr. Minam, two samples you need to take. That should be 12 weeks apart. Okay, dear, this is one of your question. They're asking you how you will take the sample. Finish, this is about your diagnosis, okay? Now come what change. Okay. Now come the treatment. So the management. People are getting confused because the treatment uh, uh, guideline actually has been changed, but changed it's for many years that, uh, but still I don't know. Uh, there are so many confusion. People are getting confused actually. So APS patient, it is not necessary. He's, she's always pregnant. Is it? No, no. I think that's why that's the place people are getting uh, confused. APS patient, she can be pregnant. She can be not pregnant, right? So pregnant, that is another kind of treatment. APS only. She is not pregnant, dear. She is now non-pregnant. She is not bearing any child now. So her treatment protocol will be different than in the pregnant state. Okay. So APS, non-pregnant, what should be your treatment? So if you know the patient is already APS, usually for prophylaxis, we are starting low-dose aspirin. This is the primary prophylaxis. This one is our primary prophylaxis. I mean, you have confirmed, maybe he she had already three or four abortions, you get platelet, APTT, this type of thing, DVT, uh, not DVT. Uh, then you go for not DVT, no no thrombus, no thrombus, okay? No thrombus still. Still no thrombotic effect, no thromboembolic event, okay? So if like that, but you did already, the antibodies are positive, all other signs symptoms are positive, okay? So you have to start low-dose aspirin, okay? So this is the first part when there is no thromboembolic event, but patient is APS, I'm confirmed. I'm confirmed. So I'm prevent, I want to prevent any kind of thromboembolic event in the future. So primarily I will only start with low dose aspirin. No warfarin, no heparin, nothing, nothing. Only low dose aspirin. 
Okay, dear? Now come, this APS patient, she has actually now one episode. Okay, it could be arterial or it could be venous. Thromboembolism now, a thromboembolism event in front of you. Now, yes, now you have to start. You have to start what? War, you need to start your war against that embolic event. Start warfarin for lifelong. Okay, so it could be one arterial thromboembolic event or it could be one, one venous thromboembolic effect, arterial thrombosis or venous thrombosis. Anything, you have to start with warfarin, you have to start your struggle or war for lifelong for that patient and your INR target for that patient, it should be two to three. Okay. Now, the last but not the least, APS patient, not one episode only, okay? It is like recurrently she's coming, recurrent episode, okay? Venous thromboembolic events are there, recurrently is having this kind of uh, events. So that time, same treatment, this warfarin, the war will be against this embolic event is will be going on, but only your INR level you should get it up. It should be three to four. That's it. So the fact is that if primary, but no thromboembolism effect, but no thromboembolic event, no dose aspirin only. One event, warfarin, lifelong, two to three. Recurrent event, warfarin, lifelong, three to four. Is it clear? I'm talking about non-pregnant. Now I will switch to pregnant. Is it clear? Tell me, then I will go to a pregnant. Mm -hmm. Okay, dear. Now come with our pregnant lady. So this patient comes to you and she's telling, oh my God, doctor, I got pregnant. Okay, I did my UPT test. It came positive, what I should do. Hmm? So you do the scan, still there is no heartbeat. No heartbeat, still. When you find UPT positive, if she is not on low-dose aspirin, start low-dose aspirin. Okay, dear? If you find in your scan heartbeat, along with low-dose aspirin, you have to go for low molecular weight heparin. So ultimately, what is the treatment? Low-dose aspirin, low molecular weight heparin. This is the treatment. And this low molecular weight heparin up to 34 weeks. So this one, you are starting this low molecular weight heparin from heartbeat to 34 weeks. Some question you are having with this combination. Yes, go for it. Okay. No, recurrent, primary, secondary, nothing matters. Nothing matters. APS patient confirm, pregnant confirm, go for this. Because warfarin is contraindicated there. So it doesn't matter if she have even any kind of thromboembolism event there is or not, one time, 10 times, 100 times. I don't care. My protocol will be same. Aspirin and molecular weight heparin. That's it. That's it. Is it clear? Tell me, dear. Clear. Okay, that's it. That's our, all about this uh, APS, okay? I hope I can make it clear. Hope you will not get any question wrong from here, inshallah. Okay, see you guys uh, in the next one, next session, inshallah. Not today, obviously. If anything I'm taking, I will tell you. But uh, I think uh, this week I will be busy with my enrolled one with uh, neurology. Uh, welcome, Dr. Priya. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a very good night's sleep. And whoever having exam recently, best of luck, all the very best. May Allah bless you with success. Really, I hope even if you are enrolled with me, not with me, if you are in my group, I'm really hoping to pass. Inshallah. I'm really hoping that all of you will pass. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. Lots of dua for you guys. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, doctor. Welcome, dear. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Allah bless everyone.